maybe it's country music that soothes your soul. Or maybe it's only rock and roll, but you like it. Whatever your taste, chances are you like guitar music. And if you love guitar music, you're not alone, especially at the Southwest Guitar Show. Celebrating its 20th anniversary, it's the oldest and largest guitar show of its kind in the country. And people come from all over the world to buy, sell, and trade, and a whole lot more. Yeah. Oh, God, it's great because there's so much different stuff. A lot of people will come out to try to meet their favorite musician. To look at the wonderful guitars. Trying to sell guitars. <laughs> The Southwest Guitar Show was the brainchild of Charlie Wirtz, owner of the legendary Charlie's Guitar Shop. So he started the shop in 76 and, and uh, just built up a word of mouth um, reputation and attracted a lot of serious, he was one of the early people in the vintage guitar business. So that helped a lot. He came into it early. And then he, when he passed away of a heart attack in 1985, I took over. I'd been touring all over the country with bands, Freddie King and James Cotton, Muddy Waters. And I was kind of tired of that. And uh, I just made a decision that, uh, number one, the shop was gonna disappear because his, his widow didn't know what to do with it. And no one seemed to be willing to jump in and take over, so I did. And along with the shop, Mark also took over the guitar show with partner Jimmy Wallace. Uh, Charlie Wirtz and Tom Van Hoos, a guy named Doug Welker and myself, uh, got together in a living room over in Oak Cliff on one Sunday and we're just, we kind of each brought two or three guitars and we're showing each other, you know, our guitars. And we said, you know, we need to like formally get this thing together. And I, uh, I ended up going off on the road and playing. And Charlie's the one that really took the initiative and took the ball and, and got the thing going. The first show was actually very tiny. There was about 10 exhibitors. No one can really remember, but there was about 10 exhibitors at the Sheridan Mockingbird Hotel Banquet Room, about the size of this room here. And it was, it was small. Um, they think there was well less than 100 people actually showed up and it was mostly nuts like me. I went to the first one. When you said 20 years, that amazed me. Uh, that Charlie Wurz had, it was at the Sheraton Hotel over off Mockingbird. Maybe six or eight dealers. And nobody really sold anything. It was just guys set up their instruments and showed them and a little trade and it got a little bigger the next year. I mean, like it's like the NAM show now. It was just huge. Those guys out there with clothing booths you know, and jewelry and stuff, like, I don't know, if Charlie saw this, he'd probably think it's a little weird. Maybe a little weird, but certainly different than Charlie expected in the beginning. Today, the show draws over 10,000 people annually to check out new guitars, collectible guitars, acoustic guitars, exotic guitars, left-handed guitars, starter guitars, even guitar parts. But the show wouldn't be complete without the music that comes from guitars. The guitar show is different things to different people. A collector might come to find the perfect guitar to add to his collection. This is the collector show. They, they are there. These guys would ruin their marriage to be at this show. A music lover might come for the great lineup, which this year included the Kentucky Headhunters. And others come for practical reasons. If you play guitar, the two girls will love you. <laughs> But just about everyone agrees, it's the magic of the instrument that keeps them returning year after year. Well, the guitar's a lot of fun. You put a guitar in a room next to a piano and let a child loose in that room, he'll run for the guitar every time. It's the easiest instrument to play, it's the hardest instrument to master. I think the guitar is like the American instrument. But the main thing is the, the spirit of the guitar is still, is what keeps the thing going. This is Kathy Whiteman reporting.